Welcome to a journey through the history of art. We will travel along a timeline from the caves to the 19th century. My name is Dr. Jean Ouellette. Let's begin by making the familiar unfamiliar. One of the themes of this series has been the extraordinary lengths people will go to to make art. How else do we explain the effort expended on the pyramids, the amazing precision of the Parthenon, except to say that culture matters, from the subsistence society of the people of the caves to the artists who found themselves having to create a new language for a new religion, Christianity. We have already discussed how a new visual culture based on a dehumanized version of classicism evolved in the East and the South, in Constantinople and Ravenna. The transition of the classical language of pagans into the spiritual cadences of the Christians seems fairly straightforward. But the situation in Northern and Western Europe was more complicated, for out here in modern-day Britain, France, Germany was the frontier of the Roman Empire. The reluctant dissident savages who shook off the thin veneer of civilization and devolved into the Dark Ages under the barbarians following the fall of Rome. That said, Christianity had to penetrate and shed light and spread the word of God to the heathens, a task for art. But the tradition of barbaric art was inarticulate in its zoomorphic abstractions. The great treasury of Sutton Hu was a case in point. The barbaric style was small scale, designed for ornament and decoration and portability, but not for communication of ideas. While we can see the relationship between barbarian art and the manuscript illumination in Great Britain, these magnificent designs are superb articulations of spiritual intensity and religious belief inscribed on the carpet pages protecting the word of God. But, as can be seen in the manuscripts, when the human figure appears, the simple representation of the body was utterly alien to these northern artists. The problem was acute. The Gospels had to be used by missionaries who needed to communicate Christian ideals and spiritual doctrines, only some of which lent themselves to symbolism. It was under Charlemagne that the Christians of Northern Europe created a new figurative and articulate language that could visualize the new religion by combining the inherited tradition of barbarian art with imported classicism. The strategy conveyed vividly in Charlemagne's palace chapel at Aachen or Aix-la-Chapelle was appropriation and assimilation of Italian or classical elements to convey the Christian conquest of the pagans, while reviving the nostalgic memory of the Roman Empire. As the first Holy Roman Emperor, Charlemagne, pulled together a mini-empire and dedicated his efforts to educating himself and his subjects, starting schools and monasteries, and importing monks to his palace to copy ancient manuscripts and to write and illustrate Bibles and Gospels. Combining a belated version of Roman painting with abstract ornamentation, the art of the Carolingian Renaissance established an art of Christianity for these new converts. After the death of Charlemagne, his empire eventually split into what would be modern-day France and Germany. On the German side, another empire arose, copying not the Roman Empire, but the Holy Roman Revival Empire of Charlemagne. This smaller empire was called the Ottonian Empire, called so after a number of rulers named Otto and a few Henrys. The monks in the monasteries and the nuns in the convents remained the essential artists, trained in the scriptoriums crafting a Christian language for the Christian faith a religion that has now created its own stories, myths, legends, narratives of devotion. Perhaps anachronistically, the art of this Germanic empire has been termed expressionistic, but perhaps a better word would be expressive. Abandoning the Carolingian attempt to assimilate Roman illusionism, the Atonians created a flat frontal field of frozen figures suspended in a time and space made of gold. 
this linear and stylized art to the north is not based on monumental art, as are the mosaics of Ravenna, but is the product of small-scale, intricate, ornamental, barbarian art. It has taken no less than a thousand years to create a Christian art form, but as we head into the new millennium, distinct differences between the art of the north and the art of the south remains. Southern art would be haunted by the memory and loss of classical art, while the visual culture of the north developed undisturbed. For hundreds of years, these very different traditions would be subsumed under the coming wave of Romanesque and Gothic architectural accomplishments. But 500 years later, the sleep of classicism would be disturbed by yet another renaissance.